Hey, it's Joe Lyons, The Automator, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to clean up phone numbers using a regular expression. And let's go ahead and jump into my code. If you're new to regular expressions, you can go here and learn quite a bit. I have a lot of videos covering them. It's a, you know, it's kind of a dense topic, but it's very, very powerful. It's definitely worth your time. And later, I'll upload this file that we work with here to this URL. Um, and also, if you're not used to functions, because I'm going to be using one because this is in my library, uh, you can learn more about functions here. So here are some helpful links for you. Now let's jump into working with the regular expression. So here I'm calling my function. And again, if you're used, not used to functions, go learn more about them. They're amazing. But I have the function has one parameter. This is the function here. This is where I call it. This is my function down here. So we want to make changes in here. Uh, this is the actual text we're sending to it. Um, and the, the Function has one parameter, and we're, I called it phone num. Doesn't matter what you call this, right? And initially, I had a different regular expression, and I noticed it was breaking when I had some crazy characters in here. And, and the thing is, you want to make it robust enough where it can handle a lot of situations. The problem is, you know, and, and also there's other stuff in other countries. I didn't take that into account. The variations you'll find in phone numbers is it's crazy, right? So. In order to really build a real robust one, you might have to do you know a lot more work, but this one should help you out a lot, right? To me, it's it's pretty clear. And I'm, I built this in steps. We're going to flatten it down into one call, but this regex replace. So regex replace is going to take your text, whatever you pass to it, and do a pattern on it. And then here I'm storing the results in this nums very now. I called it nums because this is my pattern slash large d. That means any non-digit, replace any non-digit, and just going to remove them, right? So the only thing left in, in this, so if we actually do a message box here, percent, I'm going to save and run. So see now this, this whole string here has no more other characters other than numbers, right? So it's a nice, simple way to remove non-digits, right? This backslash D. Uh, now, what I really want, though, is I want to bring it back and have it look pretty. Now, I'd probably store my data this way. This is how I would store it, and that way it's independent of the format I happen to be using in that case. So I might stop here and just take this and return that to me. But what I want to do is, in this case, I'm going to put dots between the first three, the, the second three, and then the four, right? So here I'm using a regular expression to say, hey, give me any... So uppercase, backslash uppercase D says non-digits backslash lowercase d says give me digits so this says get three digits because if i had a one to three this would one comma three this would say give me between one and three up to three um and i could you know this is a, a just a, this is a shortcut way to say just give me three and i surrounded it with these parens right that says put that into a subgroup right so this is my first group uh, this is my second group of the exactly the same thing, right? So it's a first group, second group, and then my third group, of course, is four digits. So it's a very simple pattern overall because we have three digits, three digits, four digits. And here, this is where we're now, this is to me is where I wanted to, to break this down slowly, right? Because here, when we run this, oh, you know what? Let's get rid of this message box or that'll mess us up. Save, reload, run. Notice here I have 012 dot three, four, five dot, right? And that is because I put these dots here, right? If we wanted to put parens, so we get rid of that. I'm going to highlight this, put parens around this. And usually I think there'd often be a space right here. So save and let's put a dash here, right? So save, reload, run. Now look at how pretty that is. Zero, one, two with the prefix or sorry, area code. This is your prefix. Um, and I forget that. I think that has a name. It's not suffix. I'm pretty sure that here we can, this way you can display it any way you want. And again, I wouldn't necessarily store my data this way, but if you're presenting it in a GUI, it's really nice having some sort of breaks. And so that's why I wanted to keep this part separate from the other part in the sense of just explaining it, right? Because here you, you can have a lot of different ways, you know, it, let's say I didn't, if you didn't want any, any of this, you could just use the nums, right? But if you, it, what if we want to do something crazy? Not that we would do this, but just to understand the power. So I'm going to save this, reload it. Now look, it goes three, four, five, zero, one, two. Why is that? Because you, these are grabbing those characters and you can put them in whatever order you want. You can surround them with stuff. I could put text like area code. Um, let's change that back to a one. Put in that for a new line and then this is going to be a two we'll prefix space and 
I'm just going to say last four since I don't know what those are actually called. Oh, I forgot my new line. So save, reload, run. Now notice how it broke them out, right? There's the area code, the prefix, and then the last four, right? So I'm just demonstrating how powerful it is and how you can easily change how they're displayed. Uh, I kind of like the, the what Europe, you know, now we pr pretty much use it as well, but just the dots in between, it's a nice, simple way, and it's clean to read like this, and there we go. So I hope that helps. Uh, regular expressions are super powerful. They can be, oh, I forgot the one last step that I wanted to demonstrate. So here I am running one regular expressions to swear this is numbers, and then I run a second one to do it again on the nums. I'm replacing, you know, just I'm grabbing the digits, you know, the pattern and applying it. But we don't have to do this. Now I wrote this and, and uh, seriously, I broke it out separately first because it's just easier to read and I broke them out separately. Now what we can do is I'm gonna copy this, copy, I'm gonna comment that out for now. Um, I'm gonna paste it right in here, right? So save, reload, run, and look, it still works. Why? Because AutoHotKey will do this one first and then it, after it resolves that, it applies the second one, right? So in reality, this could completely go away. Now, however, so I could delete this, but I'm not gonna because as Ace and I, you know, Raptor X, we were talking a lot about, hey, you know, just because you can make things more dense, for someone that's new to this, they wouldn't understand that if I just wanted digits, you know, I don't have to do this other stuff and whatever. So I think I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna just undo. Right, I'm gonna leave them broken out, but you could, if you wanted to flatten your file, you know, you could do a breakdown that doesn't change the speed of anything. You're not gonna see any performance benefits to it. Um, oh, you know what, let's go back in here and let's show if we had, uh, you know, other things. Now it is gonna grab, like there, it's gonna start and it's gonna get up to the first 10 characters and then it's gonna stop. Oh, actually here, no, we didn't. Oh, wait a minute. How did it get more than four on that last bit? Save, reload, run. That is really, I don't, oh, oh, I know why. Because here, I think I need this, and I probably need this at the beginning too. Yes, okay, good catch. See, and this is one, you, you gotta play with it a bit and then look at your data to see if it works or not. Now, what that is doing, the star asterisk is saying, hey, give me, you know, any and all characters before it and here, and before it was, it was, it, it grabbed this, it did, but it left the stuff because I didn't take that into account. It left those things there. It kept grabbing them and just dumping them in. Um, it's kind of hard to explain that way, but it said, get these four, but Hey, I didn't tell it to, to oops. I didn't tell it to replace this other stuff at the end. Um, and so it just left them there. And now again, with a crazy number that has too many numbers, what I should have done zero, one, two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? So save, reload, run. Now here, it's starting at the six, seven, eight. So we're losing them at the beginning. Now you, there's some advanced stuff you could do to customize or where should we start at the beginning or the end. The problem is you just often don't know, right? So it'd be really hard to write something to say, well, how often do they screw something up at the beginning versus the end when there's an extra number? You know, you could try to look at your data and see if maybe in the where you're working, there's very frequent area codes and that you could use to say, if it's one of these, we're gonna pull from there and we're gonna keep those. There's a lot, a lot complex logic you can add to this stuff. Uh, and of course, this is just an intro to the topic, but uh, I hope that helps. Regular expressions are a lot of fun. Let me know, comment in here if you have any questions. If you're trying to do a pattern, you could easily add some stuff here at the beginning if there was other countries. And if you wanna grab that and store it, now granted it's gonna shift because it'll be at the left. So the number one would, you know, we'd have a new pattern at the beginning here that so this would be two three four right and we're going to have a one in front of it because these subgroups that's a one subgroup that's another and that's another right that's going to shift over initially i had thought of doing a uh, regex match because the match you can do you can name your sub patterns you can give these things names and then it's just kind of easier mentally to understand what the dollar sign one is representing because it's not a dollar sign one it's it would be the name of the thing but with regex replace, you can't do that. And anyway, I stuck with this approach. So hope you enjoyed that. Um, learn a lot more on the regex stuff up here if you want. Cheers.